Good morning all. Today I'm going to continue designing my board which is a bit like a Pro Mini uh, but only in the sense that unlike the Nano the Pro Mini doesn't have a USB to serial converter so you've just got a TX and RX pin on the side. Uh, it's My board is just a stripped down microcontroller board which has a microcontroller and not much else. So let's go back to the schematic and just see where I got to there. So here it is, it's an 80 mega 328p microcontroller. We have a 16 megahertz ceramic resonator. There's a reset circuit here with a switch pulling down to ground. We've got LEDs, this is a power LED. This is an LED on D3, which I use to indicate the touch switch status. This is an LED on D13. I've got links to disable those LEDs if necessary. There's an ISP header here to program the bootloader into this chip. That will be essential because I doubt the chip as supplied from JLCPCB's SMT assembly service will have a bootloader in it. There's a couple of headers here for my display board, OLEDs and touch switch, and my radio tower, which is the NRF 24L01 Plus. And here's the serial connector, which goes over to the USB to serial converter. So that's the schematic. Now let's take a look at the PCB. Well, this is as far as I've got. I've got uh, header connectors for my radio tower, for the USB to serial converter for my OLED board, and an ISP header here. Here's the microcontroller at 45 degrees. Well, because you have to have your microcontroller at 45 degrees. But I also put the resonator here at 45 degrees because I thought it'd be easier to connect to the microcontroller pins and that's given me an idea it's a pretty stupid idea but I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna try it now back in a moment and that is to have all the components at 45 degrees but the headers at zero degrees yeah why not let's see if it works it might not if it doesn't I'll undo it all but uh, let's give it a try well, I've just moved a few things around and it's starting to look quite good. I've got my LED and resistor pairs. That's the power LED. This is ooh, probably the D13 LED with that being S clock, I would imagine. Uh, this is the D3 LED. Couple of, uh, oh, that's a resistor. That's a capacitor. A couple of capacitors here. I think that's the AREF one. Uh, what's that one? Oh, that's the reset one. Yeah, that's right. That goes across to the reset input pin. Um, ceramic resonator there, switch there. Yeah, <laughs> that all looks good. Oh, I'm going to start wiring it up. And uh, because the software is as comfortable doing 45 degree routing as uh, 90 degree routing, it works pretty well. Oh, that didn't look very pretty. Let's try coming from this end. Yeah, that's better. Uh, I might change that one later. In fact, let's do it now to see whether it improves. I'll route it from the resonator first. Uh, actually, I should be uh, pressing the Alt key, shouldn't I, really? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Um, okay, so... Uh, I've got uh, a 5 volts here coming down to uh, this capacitor. So yeah, I'm just going to keep going like that and uh, see how far I get, see how many wires I need and see whether com all components at 45 degrees is, <laughs> is a good or a bad idea. So just uh, three more tracks to route. Uh, these two, I'm going to go on the blue side with vias. Now I've discovered that if you put a via on a pin, like so, then it assigns the signal to that via. So when you drag it off, uh, that via, I need the alt key here, that via, you won't see the pop-up, but that has the same uh, net assignment as the pin on the chip. And I've got to fit two of these in here, which is going to be... Uh, Oh, it's not too difficult. I'll put one up there and one down there. Oh, they're crossed over. Okay, I'll have to sort that out. Um, this one here is just switched to ground. So one of these points here is ground. 
and I think it's probably easier if I just move it to the other side of the switch in the schematic. So if I go, let's just save the PCB, and if I go back to the schematic and just move uh, ground, I can have on three. Well, actually, no, ground will have to move as well. So ground can move to one, and reset can move to four. I know, I'll sort that out, it's ugly. Well, I'll sort that one out now. Uh, so if I save that, that just moves the uh, connections onto the opposite side of the switch. Go back to the PCB, bring in the changes. Keep going, I know I've got unassigned nets. Oh, there's a lot of uh, changes there. Let's see what happens. Uh, there's a lot of crashes into the uh, back, into the copper area, the top ground plane. Actually, let's just fix that. Shift B rebuilds the copper area. Just want to fix all those X's. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, and now I can route that one top side on red from the switch to that end of this reset capacitor. Okay, that looks good. So just these two to do. I'll do those off camera and come straight back. Okay, everything is routed. I'm just going to switch the top uh, copper area, the ground plane, to visible and see what we're looking like. Oh yeah, there's a few problems with that. So Shift B to rebuild that copper area. That's taken a while, because my computer's doing lots of things. Um, now someone was saying there's a way of filling in these island areas. I'll just um, try and find that and try and fill them. Well, it seems the solution to that is to set keep island to yes. If you set it to no, the areas open out. Um, now the other thing is these spokes running into the ground points I think are slightly too big. Now they're set to zero. Um, I think that's a default. So I'm just going to set them to, let's say, 20 and see what that gives me. Building is taking a long time because my computer's slow and I'm running OBS. Yeah, that looks better. They're just thinner. I mean, there's no high power here. So I don't need huge spokes, uh, and it'll just cause soldering problems if I have those really fat spokes. Um, okay, I think it's pretty much done. I might add a copper plane onto the bottom surface, the blue surface. Let's just switch off the red. I'll switch off the yellow as well to take a look at the blue. Let's just light that up. Um, yes, yeah, so I could put a copper area around that. Let's give that a try. And that looks like that with the, let's select it, if I can select it. No, that's selected the board outline. It's quite difficult to select the uh, copper area when it's the same as the board outline. Um, so I've reduced the spoke width and I've said yes to the keep islands. Now it does mean that there's an island in there which is not actually connected to anything I don't see that as a major issue, um, but uh, I suppose that's why you might not, not want to keep an island. Of course, it can't fill areas like between there where it violates the uh, DRC for track to uh, track spacing or track to ground plane spacing, I suppose it is. But anyway, that looks okay to me. That's the bottom layer, that's the top layer. Let's light that up. Let's switch all the layers on. And uh, I'm pretty much done, apart from silk screening to mark up all my uh, headers so that I know what I'm plugging to where uh, when I get the board back. So I think that's it for the PCB design. Now, I was going to call this the Pro Minty, but this is very specific to my peripherals, the radio tower sitting here and the OLED and touch board sitting here. So I've just called it Giuliano Microcontroller because that's essentially all it is. It's a 
microcontroller with some LEDs and lots of connectors. Um, so that's it for this video. In the next one I will assign components and uh, this switch was an interesting choice. We'll go through that. Uh, the rest is actually pretty straightforward. Oh, the um, resonator. Actually, I think I covered that in the previous video. But we'll look at some of the components. I'll do the assignments and then get the board sent off for production. But for the moment, that's it. Cheerio.